In the last video, we noted that the simple Claisen condensation looks unfavorable because the reaction destroys conjugation within the ester. Notice that we have resonance structures involving the ester alkoxy oxygen in the starting ester, but in the product, the carbonyl group that becomes part of a ketone in the product no longer has this resonance. This is one reason why the Claisen condensation, at least at face value, looks unfavorable. However, the reaction still goes provided we use a full equivalent of alkoxide base followed by acidic workup. This is because of an important proton transfer step that occurs within the midst of the mechanism. And so, while from a bird's eye view, the essence of the key bond formation involves nucleophilic addition followed by beta elimination or nucleophilic acyl substitution, it's this fourth step, this key proton transfer, that really drives the reaction thermodynamically. And it also puts an important constraint on the types of substrates that work in this reaction. The Claisen condensation involves the treatment of an ester with an alkoxide base, which we can represent as OR-. And in the first step of the mechanism, OR- deprotonates the nucleophilic ester to generate an enolate. Now, OR- is less basic than the enolate that gets generated on the product side, so this step actually favors the reactants. Nonetheless, we do get a small amount of the enolate via deprotonation at the alpha carbon of the ester. And here we're looking at a dimerization, so it doesn't matter which ester we use, and it doesn't matter which hydrogen we remove in this case. In the next step, the enolate engages with the electrophilic ester molecule in a nucleophilic addition step. And this is the first step of the nucleophilic acyl substitution process. The resulting intermediate contains an anionic oxygen, and that anionic oxygen is positioned adjacent to a carbon-oxygen bond and an alkoxy group that can potentially serve as a leaving group. With the negatively charged oxygen adjacent to the OR group, we have the potential for beta elimination. And beta elimination occurs to give a beta keto ester. Now it looks like we're done here. It looks like we've completed the mechanism. However, what we haven't accounted for yet is the fact that the nucleophilic addition and beta elimination steps are reversible. This means that at thermodynamic equilibrium, we shouldn't expect a full yield or even a good yield of the beta keto ester product since the overall reaction is typically endothermic or with positive delta G. What really drives the reaction forward is what happens next. There's an acidic hydrogen linked to the alpha carbon between the two carbonyl groups, the doubly alpha carbon, we might say. And now that we've attached a second acyl group to the alpha carbon of the original ester, we've acidified that carbon substantially. So now that hydrogen is much more acidic than the hydrogen of an alcohol. pKa there typically is something like 8, whereas the pKa of an alcohol is up around 15. So the alkoxide that we generated as the leaving group of the beta elimination step can deprotonate at this alpha position to generate a stabilized enolate. The enolate is stabilized because the negative charge is distributed over both carbonyl oxygens and the central alpha carbon. And we can use resonance structures to illustrate this. There's one resonance form with the negative charge on one of the oxygens and another resonance form with the negative charge on the other oxygen. So this is a highly stabilized enolate, and this step in which this enolate is generated from the alkoxide base via proton transfer is irreversible and complete. It's got a very negative delta G. This point is actually the end point under basic conditions. And if we want to isolate the neutral beta keto ester product from here, we have to use acidic workup. Treatment of the reaction mixture with an acid protonates that central alpha carbon and gives us the neutral beta keto ester product. Because it's that fourth step, the proton transfer, that really drives this reaction forward, the Claisen condensation will not work for esters that have only one alpha hydrogen. Even though we can remove that alpha proton to form an enolate, the enolate will not go completely to beta keto ester product. Keep this in mind because it's a key constraint or key limitation on the Claisen condensation our nucleophile must have at least two alpha hydrogens.